The last thing we're going to talk about with phase diagrams is this critical point. Um, and this, again, is at the end of, a, of the liquid gas coexistence curve. So we have our liquid and gas, um, and this you know, is the boiling transition between them. Um, at a certain point, we reach a critical point. So there's a critical temperature and a critical pressure that are associated with this critical point. And above that temperature and pressure, if we go anywhere in this region over here, we reach a point where our liquid and gas are no longer separate phases. Instead, they're a single phase called a supercritical fluid. Um, supercritical meaning just that it is past the critical point. Uh, and fluid because it's neither liquid or gas. They're both both liquid and liquids and gases are fluids, but their properties sort of merge and become their own sort of thing uh, past the critical point. Um, this does not happen between a solid and a liquid um, because a solid is not a fluid, and so this this phenomenon is not possible at that point. Um, to sort of show what what happens as this as we re approach this point, this is uh, the pro. This is densities of benzene here on the right. Um, so we've sort of plotted um, along two different curves together. Uh, so the top curve is the density of liquid, which is high, right? A, a liquid is more dense than a gas, and on the bottom is the gas. And so we can see uh, below the critical point at lower temperatures, and this is sort of at the critical pressure, um, we see that these um, we get very you know different behavior here right a liquid has a much higher uh, density than a gas but as we keep increasing the pressure and so we're, we're adding applying more force to the system the liquid starts bunching closer together um, and it's but its density starts decreasing and behaving more like a gas and the gas gets bunched closer together but starts behaving more like li liquid but still is a gas and so as we keep increasing the temperature approaching the critical point, as we move to the right along here, the liquid density decreases, the gas density increases, until at the critical point they are equal. Uh, and Pat, once you get past this point, right, if you keep going to the right, you, you get into the supercritical fluid regime. Um, to show sort of what this might look like experimentally, you can actually take a um, substance you know, near its critical point We'll look at a video of this in class. I'll, I'll put a link to it as well on Moodle. Um, but you kind of um, can, can watch this phase transition happen if you have you know, things set up correctly. So on the left here, we have two phases coexisting. right? So this is our gas on the top and liquid on the bottom. And there's a very clear boundary between them. right? So you can see very clearly gas is on the top, liquid's on the bottom. And as you heat this up, going close to its critical point, when it becomes subcritical, you can see the densities are now getting close and it's starting to mix together. Once you get past the critical point, there is only a single phase over here. You can no longer see that very clear boundary between the liquid and gas because there is no longer a boundary. Um, once, once you've passed that critical point, you've gone up that coexistence curving on past the critical point, you've reached the state of a supercritical fluid. Now, supercritical fluids are interesting. They have some interesting applications. Um, you know, so because their properties are a little bit different than either a liquid or gas, um, they're useful for, you know, they have different solubilities. Um, they can be used for extractions. Um, and I believe um, that supercritical fluid is used to extract caffeine from coffee um, to make decaf. Uh, so you can use supercritical fluid to dissolve the caffeine while leaving the other things that you want in the coffee. Um, so that's one, I think, pretty common use of it. And I, I believe it's supercritical carbon dioxide that's used for that. Um, and the nice thing about that is that CO2 is, you know, though it's bad for our planet in terms of global warming, it's not a toxic substance, right? It's something we breathe out every day. Um, and so, uh, and you can turn, after you, you know, do your extraction, you can turn it back into a gas. And, you know, there's nothing dangerous that gets left behind in your system. Um, so you just have to have things at the right temperature and pressure. So this is, a, this is another phase, um, the supercritical fluid phase, that's present for, for substances. Uh, so as you get to that far right corner, uh, upper right corner of a, a phase diagram, um, you reach this phase.